Wu Jing, Sun Ben, and Sun Xiang were all relatives of the Sun family. Sun Ben and Wu Jing would both become military generals and politicians, but as Sun Jian's twin brother Sun Xiang died at a young age, he did not live to see his career flourish in the same way. Wu Jing was the brother of Lady Wu, who married Sun Jian. Their parents died when the two siblings were young, so they lived together until the marriage. Sun Ben was Sun Xiang's firstborn, and so was a cousin to the famous Sun children. Very little was recorded about Sun Xiang, but what is known is that he was older than Sun Jian, and they worked alongside each other up until his death. As Sun Xiang was Sun Jian's twin, he must have been born in the year 155, and it's stated that he lived to see his children, Sun Ben and Sun Fu, essentially reach adulthood. As Sun Jian was a civil official in his youth, it could be assumed that Sun Xiang also held a similar position. Also, at the age of 16, Sun Jian and his father encountered some pirates and earned fame in defeating them, so again, it could be assumed that Sun Xiang accompanied them here, but we will never really know for sure. Sun Jian looked after Sun Xiang's sons after his passing, until they came of age, and both marched under the Sun banner from that point on. Sun Ben would have still been young when Sun Jian fought during Xu Chang's rebellion in Kuaji Commandery in the year 172. This rebellion was around a decade before the Yellow Turban Rebellion and had a similar motive. Various religious movements had sprouted up and sought to overthrow the Han government to end its corruption. There was a prophecy that someone either named or connected with Xu Chang would overthrow the Han dynasty, and it's presumed that a certain leader, although there could have been many, adopted the name Xu Chang to fit the prophecy. The local government forces drafted Sun Jian and many others to fight the rebels. Sun Jian had brought a thousand men under him and his unit fought with distinction against the uprising. The Han forces lost the battle and had to retreat, which led to the rebels attacking other commanderies. The failure of the acting commander was overlooked by officials in Luoyang after Zhu Jun bribed them to save his friend from execution. His replacement eventually quelled the rebellion late in the year 174, and once the dust had settled, he recommended Sun Jian to the capital for his great contributions in the fighting. Sun Jian was then bestowed an administrator title in Guangling Commandery, which he used to expand his influence and gain followers. It can be deduced that around this time, Sun Jian would have married Lady Wu, as their firstborn, Sun Se, was born in the year 175. As she became part of the family, Wu Jing became his new brother-in-law's subordinate, and would also serve under him in many battles to come. In the year 189, Sun Ben followed Sun Jian to join up with Yuan Shu at Changsha Commandery, to participate in the anti Dongzhuo alliance. Sun Jian relocated Lady Wu, Wu Jing, and his other family members to Lu Jian Commandery. While Sun Jian's army marched to where Yuan Shu was stationed at Lu Yang, they had already killed two officials who were loyal to Dongzhuo, earning themselves deeds before they even arrived. The strict discipline of Sun Jian's unit warded off an attack from Dongzhuo's forces whilst they were at camp, but when Sun Jian eventually left Lu Yang, Dongzhuo's men surrounded them. With several dozen men, Sun Jian charged out of the encirclement and cleverly misled the enemy before regrouping and marching towards Luo Yang. Here, Sun Ben contributed to their army's great performance against Dong Zhuo's forces, which saw the death of their fierce enemy officer, Hua Jiang. As the Sun army approached Luo Yang, they could see it was being destroyed by fire. Sun Jian ordered Sun Ben and his other officers to reseal the tombs of the past emperors, which had been looted by Dong Zhuo. Whilst this was being done, it's claimed that Sun Jian found the imperial seal. This seal was seen as a sign of legitimacy, with many regimes declaring themselves as rightful emperors if they had it. Wu Jing would have become panicked when Sun Jian found the seal, as Yuan Shu either threatened to or held Lady Wu as a hostage, until Sun Jian handed the imperial seal over to him. Much to Wu Jing's relief, Sun Jian made the swap to save his wife. Yuan Shu would eventually go on to use the seal to legitimise his claim as the emperor. Tao Tao, who was in control of the central government at this point, ordered a joint attack onto Yuan Shu, but many warlords gave lacklustre attempts or outright ignored his request. When Liu Bei intercepted Yuan Shu after his defeat, the seal came into the hands of Tao Tao, who then passed it on to his son Tao Pi, who then became the first emperor of the Wei dynasty. The infighting of the anti Dongzhuo alliance forced Sun Jian to abandon his position. Sun Ben was sent by Yuan Shu to attack Shou Ang, who was reinforced by his brother, Shou Yu. As Sun Ben commanded the larger army, he was able to score a victory here. 
Wu Jing was ordered by Yuan Shu to capture Dan Yang Commandery from Zhou Xin. As he made his way there, he was met by Sun Tzu, Zhou Yu, and many more who had come to help him on his mission. When Wu Jing reached Zhou Xin, he stated that everyone who follows Zhou Xin would be killed, which forced him into retreat. Wu Jing then became the administrator of Dan Yang Commandery. Sun Ben would have been commissioned as a cavalry commandant for his contributions against Dong Zhuo, and was dispatched to the Battle of Xiang Yang in the year 191 against Liu Biao. They defeated their enemy Huang Zhu, but Sun Jian was killed in action as he pursued the fleeing army. Sun Ben, who was older than Sun Tzu, temporarily took command of the Sun Jian army and led many of the soldiers and generals back to Yuan Shu. Sun Ben was appointed as the inspector of Yu province by Yuan Shu, but it was only an honorary position as he was still young. In the next few years, Wu Jing's nephew, Sun Tzu, had come to visit Dan Yang, looking to recruit soldiers for his army. Sun Tzu had been attacked and almost killed by a bandit named Zhu Lang, but Wu Jing learned of this and come to rescue Sun Tzu just in time. Around this time, Liu Yao had been sent by the Han government to re-establish control in Yang province. He ordered his officers to see off Yuan Shu's aggressive behaviour, which resulted in Wu Jing retreating away from Dan Yang. He and Sun Ben then regrouped at Li Yang County. Wu Jing returned to Yuan Shu to make his report, and was given a new title, then reunited with his family members, before being sent with Sun Ben to attack Liu Yao's officers. Fan Neng and Yu Mi had set up barricades at a ford, and managed to hold their defensive position for over a year, until Sun Tzu was allowed by Yuan Shu to come to their assistance. The arrival of Sun Tzu here means his conquest of Jiangdong had begun. At one point during Sun Tzu's battle against Liu Yao, he became trapped in Niu Zhu, and had to rely on Wu Jing to rescue him again. After Liu Yao was defeated, Sun Tzu sent Sun Ben and Wu Ling to Xu Chun to report their victory to Yuan Shu. As Yuan Shu was preoccupied fighting Liu Bei, he had Wu Jing reassigned to Guangling Commandery. Sun Ben was promoted to the Grand Administrator of Yu Zhang Commandery, whilst his brother, Sun Fu, who had later earned merits from successful raids against Liu Zun and Yuan Shu, was moved to Lu Ling Commandery. When Yuan Shu declared himself Emperor, Sun Tzu wrote letters to his friends and family asking for their loyalty. Sun Ben, Zhou Yu, and Lu Su all abandoned their posts and went to join up with Sun Tzu. Sun Ben's family were currently in prison, so he had to leave them for now, but he did later manage to be reunited with them. Wu Jing brought his troops from Guangling down to join Sun Tzu at Xiangdong, where he was assigned as the administrator of Dan Yang Commandery once again. This role was approved by the Han central government very quickly. Years later, in the lead up to the Battle of Chibi, after Sun Tzu's death and the start of Sun Quan's reign, both Sun Ben and his brother Sun Fu were uneasy about their new ruler due to Chuan's age. They were both stationed at Yu Zhang when Tao Tao began marching south with the intent of total domination. Sun Fu had wrote a letter to Tao Tao expressing his desire to surrender, but it was discovered by Wu forces, and he was stripped of all ranks, with his advisors being executed. Sun Fu was spared his life, and his children were even allowed to keep their titles whilst having unhindered careers despite their father's actions. This strategy of forgiveness and filial duty would help Sun Xuan's popularity among the older Wu generation. Sun Ben also contemplated surrender, but it stated that Zhu Zhi convinced him out of it. Sun Ben went on to serve in the battle at Red Cliffs, but died of illness a few months later. An edict was found in Sun Ben's possession after his death, which was sent by Tao Tao, offering him a high-ranking title, which could be tied to his death. Wu Jing died in office a few years later in the year 203. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.